This stuff does not happen overnight. It can, but ultimately it happens in these little moments that we don't really consider throughout our days. And so basically what it looks like to the outside world is, oh man, this Christian tripping, they slacking. I knew it, hypocrite. That's what it looks like to the outside world, but internally What's going on you guys welcome back to the channel my name is bria k if you are new here welcome welcome hello hello if you've been here before what's up welcome back this came to me so clear today but today we're going to be discussing the number one tool or the number one tactic that the enemy uses against you right and it's going to seem so simple and so plain y'all gonna be like duh but just let it really seep into your spirit okay so in short the number one thing that the enemy uses against you is yourself right and it's like duh but when you really let this seep in it's going to make so much sense and it's going to give you so much freedom and victory over the stuff that the enemy tries to plant into your life right the enemy does not have permission to really do something to you per se there are some instances where you know certain attacks can be sent to you but for the most part the enemy wants to use you against yourself and what i mean by that is if he can convince you of certain things if he can get you to doubt to a certain degree if he can shake your faith if he can just get you to believe his lies and deception he can turn you against whatever god wants to do in your life right he can make you believe stuff about other people and make you you know, have hindrances in your relationships. He can make you think that God didn't really say what God said and God's word is the truth. So he's gonna always try to come against what you know and your beliefs and make you doubt. All the enemy can do is really manipulate stuff around you to get you to do stuff, right? And so when you look at life from that perspective, it's gonna set you free. It's gonna help you so much, I promise you. And people in this generation love to say, oh, it's not that serious. Oh, I don't want to be overly spiritual. Sometimes, baby, it is that serious. Sometimes you do need to be that spiritual and see stuff for what it is, right? When the enemy can't get to you a certain way anymore, he's going to use whatever he can around you to get you um, either off track with God or just to get you to talk yourself or work yourself out of a blessing or the life that God has for you. But ultimately... If somebody used to struggle with lust, right? Somebody got set free from lust, addiction, and, you know, watching adult films and stuff. The enemy's going to try to send the most tempting of people their way. Now, the tempting person can't touch this individual. But what that tempting person can do, like this seductive person, they can drop seeds and plant seeds over time into the individual's life who has been set free from lust in order to get them to either go back to watching adult films or sleeping with that seductive individual. So the enemy is gonna try to manipulate everything around you to make you move, to make you either inactive, so, you, so you're fearful to move, or make you active and fall into sin or just disbelief or not trust in God, right? We're gonna bring up scripture because it's the word, it's the truth, right? So when we look back at the very first evidence of the enemy working in the Bible, Genesis 3, Eve, we all know the story, right? But I'm gonna just read it real quick and we're gonna break it down together. Genesis 3, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Eve, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? He's planting doubt in Eve. He's pitting her against herself, okay? She says, of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. She knew the truth. She knew the word of God. She knew what she was supposed to be doing. Serpent replies, you won't die. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. And you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. So he's he's twisting the truth. God knows your eyes will be open, he said, okay? This is true, but that's why God didn't want Eve to eat from the fruit tree because it's like, that's not what humans were meant to do. Satan makes a bit of truth with a lie, right? The next line, the woman was convinced. Eve was convinced. All that took was a little bit of twisting and manipulating of Eve's truth or what she knew and planting a little bit of doubt in her mind it says the woman was convinced she saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looks delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her so she took some of the fruit and ate it eve did it to herself like okay i'm trying to get y'all to the point to understand we have the power and authority in christ jesus 
to overcome whatever the enemy sends our way. All right. With the word of God, with prayer, with the authority in Christ Jesus, with the Holy Spirit living and dwelling inside of us, we do not have to fall to the traps of the enemy. We don't have to fall to sin. We don't have to do anything at all, ever. Right. God gives us the Holy Spirit gives us the self-control, which is the fruit of the spirit. Right. All these things work together so that we don't got to live for the enemy. We don't have to fall into his plots, plans and schemes. I'm trying to help somebody out here and I hope you're hearing me because the enemy is going to try to use you against you and you're not going to see it. Right. You're going to always be looking at external factors because that's what the enemy can manipulate. He can, It's like a little puppet string. Right. He can manipulate um, your co-workers or just your situations around you to get you to react. It's all about your reaction, right? At the end of the day, the only person you can control is yourself. And with help from the Holy Spirit, we have a lot more strength than we think and give credit for. And so it's like, okay, the enemy's gonna try to pull all these puppet strings to distract you so that you never reach your purpose, to make you doubt so that you never really believe what God said about you, to make you lack faith so that you can never get to the place that your faith is going to take you to, just to just trick you out of all this stuff. He is a trickster. He's a deception, a master deception guru. I don't even know what you, you know, but the thing is, there's nothing new under the sun. His tactics have not changed. When he was in the wilderness with Jesus, he wanted Jesus to say yes to the things that he was tempting him with. Jesus was hungry, it says. I'm, I'm in Luke 4 now. Um, you know, Jesus is fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, right? Is obviously hungry. The first thing the enemy does, he says, if you are the son of God, tell the stone to become a loaf of bread. He's trying to make Jesus use his own self to go against God. Next, okay, but Jesus told him, Jesus got with him with the word of God. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He says, I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Basically Satan saying, I give you all this if you just bow down and worship me. Again, that would have required Jesus to verbally or physically or whatever that looked like bow down and worship Satan. That's what that would have looked like. Again, we have authority, right? We have more, we have authority in Christ Jesus, especially, but as humans, we have complete self-control, right? So here, Jesus could have bowed down and worshiped him and received all the kingdoms that Satan was offering him over the earth. And that would have just been disastrous for mankind. So thank God. Thank you, Lord. You did not do that. Um, but what he does instead is he replies with the word of God. Okay. So right there, that's showing you how you fight the tactics of the enemy. The enemy wants to use you against yourself. He wanted Jesus to use Jesus for Satan. You know what I'm saying? I, I really hope this is making sense. And I'm trying to help y'all because it helped me realize like some of the stuff, some of the thoughts that I struggle with, some of the doubts, some stuff that goes on in my life, make me procrastinate at times, to make me inactive, to make me not take action, to make me fearful. Guess where all that stuff is coming from or happening? Right here in my own head. There is nothing anybody else can do to make, you know what I'm saying? Like, External factors may present themselves, but at the same time, I'm ultimately the only one who can take action in my life. And it's like, once you realize that, you're able to just step over whatever the enemy sends your way because you're like, okay, I could either subscribe to what the enemy has presented me. I could fall into this temptation. I can be fearful. I can choose to not believe God or I can choose to believe God. I can choose to follow God. I can choose to obey God. So the number one tactic the enemy is gonna use against you is yourself, your flesh, your mind, you as a unit. Once you're a believer, you're a threat to the kingdom of hell. You're a threat to everything the enemy has ever tried to work for. And you need to remember that, okay? And don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let him use you against you, right? We love to think and listen, I know mental health is so real. I've experienced it. But when those depressive episodes come about, cancel that thing out. When you know you really don't have no reason to be depressed in your life and some just heaviness just falls on you, pray against it. That's the enemy trying to suppress you and get you to feel heavy. When you get anxiety out of nowhere, pray against it. If you know there's no reason to be anxious, either pray and like, Lord, is there something I should be praying about right now? Because it might be something going on in the world. Or it could just be an attack from the enemy. The enemy wants to keep you in a state of distraction, unwellness, unrest, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, basically wants to wear you out. Ultimately, you're just going to have to learn and to discern when that's happening, right? And how to safeguard yourself so that 
it just doesn't completely consume you. But ultimately, if you are a believer, the enemy is going to try to get you to use yourself against yourself. We always see like, oh, why did this pastor with his huge congregation fall into sin with some random lady? Newsflash, it wasn't no random lady. The enemy had been watching that pastor for years and years and years and dug back into that pastor's past and found out that, oh my goodness, this pastor used to love lusting after a pretty young little hot thing. So he sends a nice young Jezebel to the church and he gets that pastor slowly over time to be drawn away by the lust of his flesh. And before you know it, there's this huge scandal where this pastor done slept with this young girl. You know what I'm saying? So this stuff doesn't just happen. The enemy studies us and he wants to use our flesh against our flesh, our mind against our mind. So basically, what it looks like to the outside world is, oh man, this Christian tripping, they slacking, I knew it, hypocrite. That's what it looks like to the outside world, but internally, it's a spiritual battle. And I want y'all to get on top of this thing. So get in y'all word, be encouraged, and just know when stuff starts looking crazy in your life, know what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to get you. My phone is overheated. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish this video out on my iPad. This word shall go forth, but recognize when certain situations are trying to bring about certain reactions from you that's all the enemy wants is your reaction right because that makes you lose control and makes you ultimately either choose to serve satan with your actions or words or to choose to serve and believe and live for god to me there ain't no in between to be honest with you so it's like if a situation at work riles up my anger i know one or two things are about to happen I know that I can act fleshly or I can just take a moment, pause and pray and wait till God tells me how to react, right? And I bring that up because that's something that the enemy has been trying to stir up in my life as of recently. And I've never dealt with like crazy situations at work, but recently people have been talking to me crazy at work and I'm like, okay, Lord, what are you trying to show me? You know, and it's more about my reactions. I used to have really bad road rage. <laughs> And if my friends are watching this, they're going to be like, used to, girl. But I just noticed, like, the little stuff that I think is not that big, there are opportunities for Satan to come in and try to get me off my track with God or get me to react in a worldly way. And that's all it takes, right? Backsliding and all this stuff does not happen overnight. It can, but ultimately it happens in these little moments that we don't really consider throughout our days. Those little moments where we allow our anger to rise up or those little moments where, you know, if you're a guy and you just every day you see this cute girl and you just keep looking at her more and more with lust until guess what you back in your adult film addiction you know what i'm saying like you gotta as soon as the seed is planted you gotta uproot it because you don't want to give it time to water and grow if it's not something god wants in your life okay anger pride lust greed and the holy spirit will let you know like this is not prompted by self right we could never just be that vigilant but the holy spirit will help you to see areas of your life where the enemy is trying to use yourself against you and i know it sounds crazy but it's true so just start asking god to reveal like some areas in your life that are open doors are just areas that the enemy can use against you and help and he'll help you to kind of just like navigate them or overcome them but um my ipad's getting hot too i guess it's hot today i don't know Without further ado, I'm going to end this video out. If y'all have any questions, I, you know, I love chatting up down below. So I'm getting tongue tied because I got so much to say. But I just really hope this helps somebody out there today. I love y'all. I really do. And I'll see y'all right back here again soon. Bye.